Welcome to my tutorial on how to paint a camouflage pattern on a long arm. As you can see, I already painted the barrel action and scope with this base tan color. I took it out of the action, of course, to do that, but it's, this is not a tutorial on how to take a gun apart. It's just how to apply a random looking camo pattern. One of the things to remember when you're painting a firearm like this is we're not trying to make it look like a beautiful piece of furniture. We want it to look like it doesn't, it doesn't belong in your house, it belongs out in the field. I want it to blend in as much as possible and I'll show you a way to achieve that. There's lots of different ways to do this so don't look at this like the end all be all but this is just a method. It's very simple, it's very quick and it's cheap. Um, I'm using three different colors, green, tan, and brown. As you can see, I already painted it the tan color, so I don't have that can up there. But it doesn't matter what kind of paint you use as long as you're going with a flat finish. And pick your colors according to where, where you're going to be. I'm going to use the uh, brown over the tan and then the green over the brown. And then I'll add the clear finish on top of that. It's a, it's a satin finish, so it's non-reflective. But you want to put that on there to protect your paint from the uh, inevitable scratches that are going to happen if you're out using the gun, which you probably will be if you're, if you're even watching this video. Scratches are okay, but you want to minimize how much that happens. It's rare that somebody completely ruins their paint job out there and has to reapply the paint, but you want it to, to hold up as much as possible. And uh, if you're watching this video, you probably find this thing to be kind of fun. I did not record myself masking off the scope, that's a very tedious process. I did use some, uh, some silicone in some places that I applied with a tiny little applicator on places that were just so small that masking, I might still be masking it, it would have taken me two hours to mask that scope off. Totally personal preference, remember it's supposed to look random, it's supposed to look somewhat imperfect, so if you're going for that perfect Gucci look, don't do that, take the time to mask it off, you know, appropriately if you want to use that word. What I did I think is going to work perfect for me. Uh, I stuffed a couple of rubber gloves down inside of that sunshade so I don't, I don't have any risk of actually getting any spray on the lenses themselves. And on the back there it's got quite a bit of tape so the, the, the optic itself is nice and protected. So as far as the pattern goes I'm going to utilize a technique that has been used by many many people before me. A very very cheap stencil that a lot of you probably have in your garbage cans right now. And that's an avocado bag. I cut it open. This isn't the largest one that you can buy, but it's just my wife and I, so we don't we don't we try not to buy too much. And like every other American out there, we know that uh, avocados have a life a shelf life of about 25 seconds, so we only buy a few at a time. But you take it. I like to fold it over on itself because the squares are actually fairly large. If you fold it over on itself, it'll give you a bit smaller of a pattern which is what you're looking for because we're going to be hitting it with a couple of different colors. All right, I'm just going to lay it over there like that and we're going, to, we're going to dust it. I might apply a little bit more than a dusting, but for the most part we're just going to dust it. We're not trying to get the coverage that you would get on a piece of lawn furniture or something, that's, something nice that's going to go in your house, a piece, a piece of uh, furniture equipment that you're refinishing. We want this to look as random as possible even though we're using a stencil. If you want to go really random, it takes a lot of tape, a lot of time, and a lot of cutting. There is another way of doing it, but this is just quick, down and dirty. Painting it in this method, I'll be able to go out and shoot this gun in just a couple of hours. The other good thing about this technique is you can use this to change the finish, change the paint on your firearm relatively quickly. The only thing that's going to take the same amount of time, no matter what you do, is masking off the dang scope. Uh, there's also certain places on the action where you really don't want to get any paint, so just, just be judicious with how you aim. Right? I'm going to start off with the brown, because the brown is very, uh, is very, very dark in this case, and I don't want to overuse the, the, the brown. But it'll help offset and blend together the two different shades of this, uh, of this tan here. Because right now, even though it's no longer a black gun and a tan, scope, and a tan stock, rather, it's still fairly noticeable. Right? I already shook the can before I started the video, so I'm just going to give it a nice, a nice little dab there, and that's it. And you can see the cool guy pattern that's already starting to emerge. I'm just going to keep moving this down and add, uh, add a few more sprays all the way down. All right, I'll be back when I finish that on this side of the gun. All right, welcome back. So as you can see, that camel pattern actually came out pretty good. 
and uh, it's almost tempting to leave it just like that because it actually looks pretty nice. Uh, I've already achieved the effect I'm looking for, but I do want a tad bit of green in there because of where I'm going to be shooting this gun. So, word of the wise, in between colors, you want to wash your, uh, your stencil. Um, do not wash it in the kitchen sink, especially with dishes in it, because you will get paint in there. Put some warm soapy water in, a, in a, another sink. Hopefully you've got one like me. I've got just a wash basin in the laundry room. Fill it up with some soapy water and scrub it pretty good. Being gentle at the same time because it will start falling apart. Make sure it dries really well or it will leave uh, uh, nasty marks on your on your, your bottom of your sink. But also if you don't wash it in between coats, it will leave nasty marks on your weapon as well because the paint is building up on that thing the whole time. And believe it or not, you use a lot more paint than you would think. Even though I just dusted it on there, uh, there the overspray is pretty good and most of the paint, believe it or not, is, is being caught by your stencil. As you can see, there's a couple places where I got a little bit more brown, that, uh, like off like overspray off to the side of the stencil, and that's totally fine because it looks irregular and that's what we're looking for. So I'm going to start again with the green and work my way up. We'll see what that looks like. By the way, off camera, I did stand the weapon up this way and spray it across the top. You want to do that as well or you'll have a, a very distinguished line of no paint across the top, which looks quite funny. It doesn't look, it doesn't in any way match the effect that we're looking for. Alright, just uh, I did put on a glove by the way because I realized I was um, painting my own hand. So, take a couple of test sprays off to the side. That's it. That's all, that's all she's going to get. Just, uh, just barely noticeable on there is kind of what we're looking for. Oops. It's already going back to being a little bit sticky. But part of that's because now it has dried paint on it that is a coarse paint. So you're going to have to keep working to keep your stencil more or less in the attitude that you, were, that you originally set it into. All right, so I'll shut the camera off and come back when it's done. Okay, so I'm almost done with it now, but I realized that uh, there's a small technique that I've been using that I didn't actually show on the camera. If you lay your stencil over the top like that and hit it with paint, everywhere that the stencil is really close to the stock will give you a very distinct print. Every place where it's a bit further away, like right here in this area, you'll get more color with less definition. So if you really want a nice pattern up in there, you've got to really tuck this thing in to the contours, to match the contours or whatever it is that you're painting. As you can see, it's really getting sticky. Right? But if, once, I, once I tuck it in there like that, I can, I can be pretty confident that I'm getting a really nice close-up pattern in there, which is exactly what I was looking for. All right, I'll be back. All right. For all intents and purposes, we're done applying color. Unless I find something somewhere else along the line there that I don't like. Maybe I missed a spot or, or something. I don't know. But I think it turned out pretty good. There's almost a helical pattern right there. I might go back and adjust that before I add the, uh, the final coat of paint. Down here in this area, I actually applied another another splash of the base coat because they were just a little bit too dark. Um, it, the light in the, uh, in the room is making it look a little bit lighter than it actually is, but that's something to consider when you're painting a camouflage pattern. I probably should hit that with something. As you can see, the rest of the gun practically vanishes into the background. The camo is so awesome. That's a joke. But I'm going to let it dry for at least an hour before I add the clear coat. I might even let it dry a little bit longer than that. It's not a gloss finish, so the orange peel effect I'm trying to stay away from probably won't happen. And I've been pointing out that it doesn't have to be uh, perfect because it's camo. But the thing to keep in mind is that we want this, the paint to stay on the gun as long as possible and that orange peeling will actually pull it off of the gun. And when that happens, you can't put it back. You've got to scrape it off and kind of start over in that particular area. 
different schools of thought about when to take off your masking before or after you add the clear coat. I don't really care what you do. Um, there could, there's a right way or wrong way, I suppose. I don't know what the right answer is. I'm going to leave it on. Anytime I spray stuff on there, I'm going to leave all the masking stuff on. The firearm itself already has a weatherproofing finish on it. So does the scope. So I don't, it, it does, it, to me, it's six one way, half dozen another. But I'm just going to leave it on there because um, it was a, a giant pain in the neck. And the other thing for me is that taking the masking off is almost always the last step. The last thing I'll point out here is that this stencil here, this bag that I used, once the paint started to dry, because it does dry fairly quickly, it actually helped it stay together. So wash it or not in between colors is up to you. Um, I went back and added a couple of touches of brown here or there where the, the, the pattern was uneven, and I didn't wash it. I just let it dry a little bit so that it wasn't leaving big clumps of paint on the, on the gun when I laid it down, and it worked perfect. And right now, it's almost, um, it's almost hard, I guess you could say. It's still malleable. I can still bend it around where I need to, but I, it's, not, uh, um, it's, it's not collapsing on itself, and it still leaves a fairly random-looking pattern. So overall, I'd say it was a great success. I hope you guys liked this video. And if you have some better or alternate methods or even just using this simple thing, feel free to comment. But remember, I'm not claiming that this is the end-all, be-all, the only way to do things. This is just a quick and easy way. I've been working at this for maybe 30 minutes, not counting the taking the gun apart the first time, masking it off. That probably took me an hour and a half or so to get all that stuff done. But the actual paint application here for the camo pattern, half an hour, tops. Um, I've only turned the camera off so that you didn't have to be bored watching me slide the whole thing around. Nobody wants to watch that. So, all right. Thanks for watching.